It is a miracle of nature that in just under 30 days an egg becomes a live baby goose capable of walking, swimming and foraging for food. When a gosling makes their way out of their shell, the first thing that they see is their mother, a beautiful Canada goose whose warmth and devotion incubated them and brought them into this world. The babies are born with their eyes open and are ready to leave the nest and follow their parents within 24 hours. The babies are mobile and are able to swim, forage and communicate to both parents and siblings by making sweet, twittering noises. Female geese choose their nesting site from a variety of environments. Some are in the open and some hidden. The nests are created on the ground using dry grasses, mosses and other plant material and lined with down and some body feathers. It has been observed that female geese choose similar nesting sites to those from which they themselves hatched, thus having learnt from an early age to observe and copy the customs of their own mother and father. At two weeks old, the goslings have already acquired much knowledge. They are able to feed from delicious land and water grasses and now know and understand their environment quite well. Some Canada geese parents may join forces to bring their tiny goslings up together in flocks. The geese form a kind of childcare facility where the goslings are looked after communally by all the adult geese. There are obvious advantages to this in terms of safety. There now being a group of adults to look out and prevent danger to the flock. And perhaps, within these groups, some of the less experienced geese can learn from the masters how best to parent their babies. When Canada geese parents get together and their goslings mingle, the little ones may walk or swim away with goslings of another family. As a result of these community babysitting services, I have seen some Canada geese families made up of different aged goslings. This happens when an older gosling of a few weeks old joins a family with younger hatchlings. Some Canada geese parents welcome other goslings into their family because a larger family is a more dominating party in the world of the goose. And on the flip side, some parents prefer to have smaller families. Canada geese parents' main duties consist of being fierce protectorates and safeguards of their goslings. Adult Canada geese pair up and form a lifelong bond resulting in loyal and monogamous relationships. Goose pairs generally remain faithfully united until death. There is no doubt in my mind that the emotional intelligence of Canada geese equals that of a human's capacity. In grief, like in man, a goose will hang its head, lose its appetite and become indifferent to its environment. Adult geese are also as loyal to their goslings as the goslings are to their parents. They are brave and courageous creatures. Watch this pair defend their family from a dog. <coughs> At about one month of age, wing feathers will begin to sprout though the back of their heads remain a fluffy yellow. At this point, the goslin also grows some little black tail feathers. The goslin is now about a third of the size of his mother. From this age onwards, the Canada goose markings begin to appear more rapidly. Strong flight feathers begin to grow from blue quills on their backs and wings. Their cheeks now show the bright white racing stripes, the well-known trademark of the Canada goose. At about seven or eight weeks old, the goslings begin to resemble their parents, despite having fainter markings and retaining some sweet light grey down. At three months old, their graceful necks have become a darker glossy black and their distinct white cheek pattern is becoming more pronounced. This white marking is a distinct, unique pattern different from his parents, siblings and friends. Every goose has a unique white facial pattern, like the fingerprint on your hand. Young geese often remain with their parents for the first year. As the summer wanes, the goose families become more social and reform in flocks, gathering in larger numbers where there is a good food source. I am often asked how I identify my geese. 
The cheek patterning is just one of the ways. When you bond with a goose or any other creature, you come to realise that they don't all look the same. Every goose has their own distinct look and personality. Male Canada geese, which are called ganders, are usually larger and more muscular than the female geese. Some male geese are twice the size of their partners. Ganders, like my friend here, Honk Honk, are usually more talkative and confident. Ganders look more masculine. They are more powerful looking. They are sturdy and they have thick, strong necks. Female geese, on the other hand, simply look more feminine. They have smaller bone structures and less square faces. They are usually quieter than the males, and while I have found them to be quite reserved, once you have gained their confidence, they can be more affectionate towards humans than the males can be. Bonded pairs talk by alternating their honks and their wonkonks in rapid succession, so quickly that it may sound as if only one is talking. By spending time with them, you learn their individual unique ways. Some are shy, some aggressive, some loud, some quiet. Some greet me with a low, deep, trumpeting honk, and some of them greet me with a high-pitched a wonk, a wonk. One of the things I love most about Canada geese is their individual personalities and the willingness of many of them to engage and welcome me into their world. Learning about them on an individual and personal level and allowing me to observe and follow their stories. What do you love about Canada geese? Do you have any stories that you would like to share? I would love to read your comments below. If you have enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe, and I will see you again next time. Goodbye.